Hey guys, Squiff the Lazy Geek here and today we're gonna do something that is thoroughly unlazy and this is because we want to be long-term lazy and I am so excited because today again despite the strong winds do you, do you find a recurring theme about strong winds on my roof balcony in Tokyo? If so, you're a good watcher of this channel. If not, you might not be subscribed and you might want to go down below and subscribe if astrophotography is your thing, or astronomy for that matter, um, or curiosity, why not? Uh, at any rate, um, what we're gonna do today is test out some new equipment. So my AZ um, GTI, uh, no, not GTI, AZ EQ5 mount is fairly new to me, but I have tested it before and I know that it works. However, I am going to tonight control it with a new a piece of software that uh, I used to use EQ mod, which is a way to connect to the mount directly and without using the hand controller. And uh, now I'm going to uh, use another method, another piece of software to control that cable. It's, gonna, it's called the GSS or GS server or Green Swamp server um, because they like Shrek. No, I have no idea. Um, and uh, we have here, I have a USB cable and thanks to you guys, yes, you, thanks to you in the comments, I finally understood how I could connect this uh, USB cable to my computer and make it work. The answer is you want to have like the speed at 115,200 bows, whatever a bow is. Um, and that was the, uh, the answer. So I am able to connect directly to the scope via USB cable and I'll be controlling it with new software. So I want to make sure that it works. On top of that, we have a new scope. So this is my new baby and my new baby will be put on this dovetail bar for the first time ever. This dovetail bar has meta metallic parts that will get into that poor dovetail and we are going to mar that poor dovetail forever right now. <laughs> this feels so bad. But with that, you know, I want to check the focus. I want to check that the camera works. I want to check that, you know, we, we are able to actually get images out of this, uh, this scope. And I am going to kill that poor counterweight bar. No, not that poor counterweight bar, that poor dovetail. I feel so terrible about that. No, no, don't do this to me. It's screaming at me. Mercy. <laughs> well, no. Uh, rage, rage against the dying of the light, little scope. Ah, here we are. Ah, this is such a beautiful scope. And so we're going to do several tests. Uh, one of the first steps, tests that I'll do, we have some hills with um, an amusing, amusement park back there. So I'm going to try to point the scope to it and see if I can get in focus using the uh, ZW focuser that I have added on top of this, uh, this scope that I showed on the video and you can see here. Now this scope is not balanced at all in declination. I would need to add a counterweight to the front of the scope. I don't have that today, so huh, we're going to be completely unbalanced in declination for today, but that's, uh, that's how things are. So we're going to check the focus, we're going to check that I can slew with the mount, and we're going to check for a meridian flip. We also, I'm also going to try to get an estimate for my backlash on the uh, EAF or at least you know, just set it, set it up as overshoot backlash. Basically, try to do as much as possible before the night comes so that I, am, I don't end up being completely frustrated throughout uh, the night or by a poor result across the night. And while I'm at it, on this uh, telescope that has had its dovetail marred forever, um, lowering its uh, resale value by 60%, uh, we, I'm gonna put a dew heater as well which I am going to connect uh, here. And this is not going to be a masterpiece of uh, cable management for today, but that's fine because we're not trying to get beautiful cable management. So I have a connected camera focuser and U heater to power and the mount is also connected to power. I am going to try to see if I can get it balanced with one of my counterweights here because I did something very bad um, as you noticed I put on the the scope before I put on the counterweight which is always a terrible idea because it's an unstable balance and the scope might have hit the tripod by basically just uh, tipping over the axis although with that very small and light scope it was extremely unlike unlikely yeah okay let's see if 
by putting the counterweight all the way up I can get balanced yeah more or less I'm not gonna go for perfect balance for today uh, but I might yeah yeah it's still a bit uh, east heavy like that so counterweight side heavy but you know that's how things are uh, at least I know that uh, I don't have too much distance between my counterweight and the RA axis okay so next step is I am going to point the telescope towards the horizon and hopefully we'll be able at some point to bring it into focus using the ZW focuser to do so I will uh, connect the master USB cable which is fat and thick thick boy okay and here we are this master USB cable going to the camera we are, it's also going to the guider and it's going to the uh, autofocuser as well okay and I have Nina opened I'm going to connect to the camera and while I'm at it I'm gonna start cooling it and I am actually going to cool it with a minimum duration because I have found some um, artifacts on the camera sensor itself um, when cooling it too fast uh, and that's something that I'm checking with ZW I might have to send my 533 MC Pro for repairs we're gonna see anyway that's one thing being done I have I don't have a filter wheel but I do have a ZW focuser which I am going to connect to and uh, we have uh, the uh, telescope which I hope is on it is now and uh, we're gonna connect to the telescope as well except that it didn't work so there that's why we do things like that I'm gonna check so to connect to that device via USB you want to check uh, the thing that says prolific uh, adapter in under the COM uh, ports and man that wind so it is COM5 so I am going to connect to COM5 and my baud rate is 115,200 uh, 115, I was right from memory I'm so good um, and with that I am going to uh, connect to this and now we are connected the mount is parked and what's cool with this GS server is that we have a 3D view of the mount to see what's happening to it which is you know pretty cool in all honesty now one of the things I'm going to do immediately and this is something I learned uh, the hard way is that when using this uh, GS server uh, unlike EQ mod under the PHD2 uh, options I want to make sure that in here I have reverse deck output after Meridian flip and now that's done we're good so while I'm in PHD2 I am going to just connect to my QHY camera which is the uh, QHY 52 and I am going to connect uh, not to scene scan but I am going to connect to also uh, the mount and now that both are connected I want to make sure that I can you know get frames out of this and yes I'm gonna remove uh, the uh, cover we get pure white but that's good it means the camera is working so we're doing good for now so guiding is hopefully at least we have connection to the mount and connection to uh, the camera uh, through the guide scope that is working fine and the next step that I am going to do is uh, well make sure Nina knows that it is connected to the telescope and now that it is connected to the telescope I am going to make sure that I can actually slew it uh, telescope is parked okay I am going to unpark it first if that unpark button works uh, yes it did actually and now I cannot do it okay I can slew it from there but not from Nina so I am going to disconnect reconnect Now, can Nina actually slew the scope? Yes, it can. So at least, okay, so as long as the scope is slewing and I have those buttons working, then we should be fine. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, so the scope is fine. We are, for some reason, not able to use those controls here, but okay, that's fine. I understand the limitation, so that's exactly why we're doing those tests and now I am going to manually 
uh, go towards um, that um, entertainment center, whatever. Um, we're going to stop the tracking and we're going to see if we can get the main camera focused. Okay, so hopefully with that, I am not being a peeping Tom, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, uh, let's go under imaging. I'm going to take yeah, 0 0.15 is a fairly short exposure, but apparently I need even shorter. We're not going to loop. I'm going to go from uh, for 0 0.05. And it's still too high. Okay, uh, 0 0.01. Aha, we're getting better although we are out of focus, but we see an image, so that's good. It's another uh, checkpoint done. So now I am going to go to the focuser and see what happens when I put it to like uh, uh, 27,000. First, I want to visually look at it to see whether it goes in or out. It tried to go in, so that's, that was bad. So I'm going to put it at uh, 29,000. So I'm going to move it to 29,000 and Yes, we can see the uh, focuser. For me, I can see the camera slowly moving out, uh, which is good. We're going to take another exposure. We are more in focus, so let's try 30,000. Okay, it seems we're more in focus. I think it's in between 29,500. So 31,000. It feels kind of magical to see that focuser very silently moving. Um, oh, we're getting closer. So uh, let's see what is going to be my proper step size for my focuser. We can try to figure it out, out during the day. So I'm going to start with 40 here. And uh, we're going to see what happens when I move it like in uh, the in direction and see, do we get better or worse focus? Worse focus, so I want to go out. Let's do it the second time. We don't have backlash compensation that I'm aware of uh, yet. Maybe we do, but anyway. And we can see indeed a Ferris wheel that is currently more or less in focus, which is good. Now, what else can we do? We can try some auto focusing. So first things first, I'm gonna put, uh, I'm gonna disconnect the focuser for a moment so that I can access um, an equipment option, which is backlash compensation method overshoot. And I am going to set like just 50 steps because visually it didn't seem like the focuser had a lot of uh, backlash. So with 50, I think we are covering the whole of the focuser backlash, but we'll see if that's, uh, that's appropriate. Now also um, just temporarily, I will put my um, autofocus method to contrast detection and I would put the exposure time to 0 0.01. We're going to stay with uh, statistics and uh, we are going to see if we can get some autofocus running fairly smoothly. So let's go under the autofocus tab and I need to reconnect the focuser. And we're going to start the autofocus, see what that gives us. Okay, let's take one exposure and we are in focus. <laughs> that was fast. It actually kind of works. I'm so, uh, yeah, okay. So we can see that the autofocus does seem to be working. Ideally, I would want to put more points on the right side of my Gaussian curve here, but we can see autofocus is also likely going to work fine. And it seems that, you know, a step size of 40 is not that bad. So if I go back under imaging, I go to my image, I will move it by 20 and 20 more in one direction. And it moved it a little bit, 20, 20 more again. Wait, is it getting closer into focus? I think it is. Yeah, so now we're getting close, uh, more out of focus. Yeah, okay. And I think with this amount of out of focus with each step, we might be fine, although I feel like I want maybe a 60 
uh, step size of autofocus, but we'll see how it goes. So let's not forget to go back to the default exposure time to start HFR. And I'm going to start with uh, trend and hyperbolic or maybe trend and parabolic, doesn't really matter. And uh, we'll see how that works during the night. Okay, so we've checked what? We've checked that the guider can be connected, the mount can be connected to the guider, we can control the mount, at least we can slew it. Uh, we haven't checked that we can sync the mount, but I'm going to assume that's the case. That's something we'll have to check at the start of the sequence. We've checked that the autofocuser is working. We have a decent autofocus step size and we've checked, you know, that every like all the connections seem to be working. The camera is uh, working. It's currently at a temperature of one degree out of uh, the target of zero, which is fine. Um, yeah, I think we're we're in pretty good shape right now. So now we're going to test the Meridian Flip. So to test the Meridian Flip, I'm going to open uh, Carte du Ciel or Sky Charts. Um, and basically, I'm going to slew the telescope very close to uh, the Meridian intentionally. So first things first, I'm actually going to park it so that I make sure. Yeah, it doesn't know where it is anymore. Huh? Uh, stop. OK, I've turned the mount off and on again. So we're going to connect to it again. And we're going to say set home to say this is the home. Yep. And we're going to click park. And yeah, we should be parked in position. So everything is working properly. I'm going to unpark and uh, we are going to connect. Now I'm going to go to telescope settings under Carte du Ciel. We're going to go to ASCOM. Use the button, the menu or the button connect telescope to connect. I mean to configure. So connect telescope. We are going to select not EQ ASCOM, but Green Sky, Green Sky Telescope Control. Uh, we're going to click OK. We're going to click uh, Connect. And we are connected and tracking. So I'm going to put um, now. Oh man, the, the buttons have changed since the light last time I used it. OK, now. And we can see that if I go one hour into the future, we're going into uh, left to right direction here. So maybe I am going to say uh, one minute. I'm going to zoom in. Oh man, the, the interface has changed too much. I'm I feel completely lost. Okay, and we have several minutes until this target here, IC 4592, um, gets across the meridian. So I am going to say slew the telescope to there which makes sure that we can actually slew the target at the same time, which seems to be, uh, to be working fine. Oh man, that, that scope looks so unbalanced. I feel terrible for it. Oh well. So we are slewing towards target. Of course, we won't see anything. I don't expect to. But what I am going to do is under Nina, I am going to go under imaging. We're going to see, I'm going to put minutes after Meridian at like two minutes after Meridian. And uh, we're going to set recenter after flip to off. Autofocus after flip to off, but the auto meridian flip enabled so that we can actually check that things are working correctly. So now that we are there, I'm going to go into the sequence. I'm going to set an exposure time of what, like uh, 30 seconds. I'm going to um, name that um, target test. Okay. And we are going to take like what, uh, 60 lights. And that basically should make Nina basically look for their meridian flip. And once we get close to the meridian flip, it should initiate that flip. And I want to make sure that the flip is initiated and the mount actually does flip. So that's probably the extent of all of the tests that I can do while it is light, while we don't have stars. I cannot check the polar alignment. I cannot check the guiding performance. I cannot check plate solving. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff that I cannot check. Well, yeah, I cannot check plate solving really. Um, you could check if you've uh, installed a new plate solver. You could, uh, there are actually ways to test plate solving using existing images that you have. Uh, but that's not my case, so I'm not going to do it. But with that, I'm just going to wait for the Meridian flip and we're going to see if it works. Okay, and I figured it out. Um, we're all good. And we should be getting a flip very soon. So hopefully that's not going to happen too, much, too many times. We'll go back to sequence and we'll start the sequence again. We'll see whether in a few minutes we get a Meridian flip or not. And here we are. 
we're getting the countdown to the meridian which is perfect so hopefully this scope will actually flip and that will make the end of my pre um like pre actual imaging session checklist right so everything has been checked including the meridian let's see if it actually does the flip and if it does we're golden and we're ready to image tonight yes it's working it's working everything's good ah this is awesome okay good so we have a scope that is doing a flip meridian flip uh, we already know the camera is working. We know the focuser is working. We know the guider can be connected to um, We know the mount is working with this new software that I'm uh, trying out Everything's good. So I think we are ready for tonight. This is great Yes, yes working so <laughs> it's gonna not gonna it's gonna settle It's not going to select a new guide star or the auto auto guider um, But this is perfect. So I'm ready and this will be the end of this video. So this is just a general video about like, you know, don't forget to check things as much as you can prior to your actual imaging night. Even the Meridian flip you can actually check. And I think that's very important. And you can avoid so much frustration by doing so. Of course, one thing to remember is once you've done this Meridian flip uh, check, you want to go back and set uh, the options back to my 10 minutes past Mer Meridian, recenter after the flip and for me, I want to autofocus after the flip just in case. But with that, we're good. So thank you so much for watching. If you are new to this channel, if uh, first welcome to this channel. And you know, if this is the kind of content that interests you about tips and tricks regarding astrophotography, astronomy, or you know, um, re gear reviews, all that kind of stuff, everything related to the domain, feel free to go down, click on that subscribe button, click on the little, little notification bell while you're at it. And anyway, if you like this video, go down, click on the like button. Please also feel free to go down in the comments. Let me know what you thought about this, what you think I should be doing, or whether you have any suggestions. And as always, your comments are very much appreciated. I'm learning a lot from them. And you know, like this USB thing, I'm actually applying them. So thank you so much. It is super useful. And with that, thanks so much for watching. Whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.